following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Big up the girls inside the party. Let's get down to crazy Jimmy. Big up myself to know that I'll be the one and only the Turkish MC. Always love the clothes of Jimmy. Fish, punk, yo, what do you want to be? Jimmy Star's new celebrity. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. We are live and happy to be here. Before we get started, let's say hi to everybody. If you can see Astro sitting here. <laughs> We want to say hi to uh, my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Hey, 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 Astro's on television. He's such a ham. Astro, look, look at the world. Look, 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 look. Show them how handsome you are, you cute little thing. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Yeah, what's up? So we got a chat room. People are starting to come in. Hello, hello, chat room. Uh, we have Teresa Sabin. She's in Florida. We have Jane Doe, who's also uh, Angela Joseph, and she's in Colorado, uh, we have Anton Country Super. He's in Australia. Uh, who else was just in there a second ago? P.O. Oh, Cindy Lady Lake is in there. So lots of people starting to come in. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, Meg Ruddick is there. Hey, Meg. Meg. Hey, Meg. Did you are you the one that sent the barbecue <laughs> set? Please let me know. The mystery. Everybody's wanting to know. Who's, I have to explain this. I, for my birthday, received the most beautiful, uh, what's it called? Barbecue set. By who? Uh, what somebody good. I forgot. Anyway, <laughs> beautiful, magnificent barbecue set. She said yes. It was you, you <laughs> devil. I told you because she's the one who asked to, for our address. <laughs> now I can write it on Facebook so everybody will know. It was Med Rudick and Alan Ru Dr. Alan Rudick. You guys, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Meg, I love it. Honey, when you and Alan come, we're going to barbecue with it. Thank you so much. It's a sweet. I figured it might have. I thought it was either you or or two other people I had in mind, but you were one of my suspects. I thought it was you, and it came from Amazon, so we didn't know. It didn't come with who didn't it came from. Didn't have a card. Didn't have a name. Had nothing. It was like a mysterious gift. But it is beautiful, Meg. Did, Thank you did, so much. Didn't you go on my Facebook page and see the mystery? <laughs> I wrote it was a foreign intrigue mystery. Who is the mystery person who sent the beautiful barbecue set? Thank you so much. You shouldn't have done it, but I know you. You do it anyway. She said no, but you're very welcome. I know. She can't you. wait to come and eat with yeah, you. Yeah, when you come, we're going to make a, one of the meals. We'll have many meals, but one of the meals we'll have at our house will be a barbecue with your B. What was the company again? I forgot. It's a really good one. With though. the C. It begins with a C. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Isn't that awful? It's beautiful, though. It's it's really it even has a meat thermometer. Oh, she handle. said they screwed it up. There was supposed to be a note, and they should have been it should have been there sooner. We got it yesterday. It was fabulous. The dogs were barking at the Amazon mailman guy. <laughs> no, no, no note. It was mysterious. But anyway, it's beautiful. So thank you so much, Eileen Shapiro just joined us. What's up, Eileen? Hi, Eileen. Lady Lake Music is there. Hello, Lady Lake and uh, Cuisinart. Was it Cuisinart? Cuisinart. Maybe it begins with a C. Lady Lake put that. Yeah, it was a Cuisinart <laughs> barbecue set. Gorgeous. I don't even want to use it. I want to hang it on the kitchen wall. It's, it's so beautiful. <laughs> you could use it as a piece of art, as a painting. It's got like things to hold the corn, and it's got like but Meg shish always, kebabs. Meg always does sweet <laughs> things. Meg is a very good-natured woman. So is her husband, Dr. Alan uh, Riddick. And they're both wonderful friends of ours who we love and adore and who we will see when we get to Atlanta filming because they have a lovely summer place up in Hilton Head and we like to go there and have fun with them and hang out with play them. tennis. Jimmy plays tennis and Meg and I just sit there and gas gossip and gab. <laughs> <laughs> we got a great show for you guys today. We have serious radio host Eric Alper who's also uh, like Howard Bloom last week a publicist with the biggest stars on the planet. And we also uh, have actor Al Sapienza coming on. You guys know him from basically he plays a hood in everything, but he's been in every TV show possible for the last 15 years. He's on every show possible. He's been in a lot of great movies. And uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun. And he's got a new movie that came out yesterday. 
Um, everybody in the chat room is saying what a lovely set it was because they all saw it on Facebook. So what? <laughs> the set. What set? The barbecue set. Oh, the barbecue <laughs> set. Well, I'm, I'm playing with it. I'm playing with my little boy here. And, you know, Megan Allen have the cutest little bunker. And he's an adorable little uh, miniature poodle also the size of, of this character. And they both have the same kind of personality. So I wanted um, a boy to wave it. Meg, say hi to Meg. Auntie Meg, say Auntie Meg, where are you? <laughs> Everybody so says little. they love our new seating. This is our this is our like two seat leather. What do you call that? Reclining chairs that we got for Christmas. Right. You press a button and, and you they go lie into, back. Like, it's awesome. Labor. I call this the winter room because we only use it in the winter time to watch television. Uh, in the summertime, and the reason we moved in oh, here is because I was talking. You just interrupted. Okay, me. the reason we moved in here just is we had your mother and father uh, ever tell you not to. Interrupt we had so people? many problems last week because we kept losing our internet. So now we're actually plugged into the hardwired into the uh, into the router. So hopefully we don't have any internet problems today. I'm going to plug you into a router. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, you filthy <laughs> pig. No, he interrupts me. She says hi, Astro. I, I, but seriously, were you raised by like normal parents or what? Were your parents yeah, like normal, interrupted? I parents. mean, were they intelligent, elegant people, or were they just like loudmouth Southerners? No, they weren't loudmouth Southerners. Who they interrupted? From the South. My mom's from Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, but your father was from where? Kentucky. That's the South. <laughs> yeah, he's like you. He liked to talk. <laughs> no, I don't like to talk. I used to get paid for talking, except when I come on this show. Oh. You know, Dave you Hughes just joined us, and he says, "Please plug him into a router too." <laughs> Dave, and he I love like, Dave because he's but a pig. seriously. There was a day when I used to get paid for what I do. Now, now I could do it for free for Jimmy. So he tells me, I, "You know what, Jim? I shouldn't talk. So I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm going to stop now." Okay. Why are you going to stop talking? And he doesn't say anything. Oh, Eileen says to, to remind you, I was raised in Manalapan. You were raised in Manalapan. No, you yes. were not. Your father had a place in Manalapan. Uh, listen, Eileen, I heard that your bra straps were cutting off your circulation. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> Which, you guys, we were going to have Eileen on today, but we're not having her on because she... Because her, her bra straps cut off her circulation. No, because her... And she couldn't talk. Her book, Waiting for Adam, is now not coming out till July. We're going to have her on to promote it. It's available for pre-order now on all the, the, the sites and uh, Manalapan is not a disease, Dave. <laughs> no. And Eileen's book, Looking for Adam, is about this truck driver named Adam who banged her, and he was such a good screw that she was looking for him. So she went all over the world looking for the <laughs> yeah. truck driver named Adam. So, Adam, if you're out there, Eileen needs you. <laughs> right? Well, it does about Adam Ant, that little girl, that little thing that she loves so much. Adam Ant's the size of her foot. So we wanted to go to be a New York Times bestseller, everybody. So uh, Google Eileen Shapiro on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and order her book. It's a good book, seriously. It's all about her love affair with Adam and with Adam Ant, how he got her pregnant and she had alien children. <laughs> no, they came out as grays, you know, with the big eyes. She's got them. She loves them. She hides them. And they're alien. You know, they speak a different language and they're teaching her now electronics. So they designed a bra for her that is strapless so she won't lose circulation. And when she wears this bra, that's her, hilarious. her boobs light up and they send out SOS in case she's in trouble. So it's good for all you women out there who are alone. You should get this bra in the event that you're traveling at night and some crazy guy's following you. You simply press a button and your bra lights up SOS, SOS. Eileen's selling them online now. We also want to welcome Paul from the Zest Radio Show to our chat room. Hey, Paul, how are you doing? And uh, I like all citrus fruits. I don't oh. know what that had to do with anything. <laughs> well, I think he's referring us to as, as fruits. No. So <laughs> we're not citrus, but we are fruits. <laughs> and we love him. He's fabulous. And Eileen says something lights up for you, Ron. Oh, honey, you light me up. You know, Eileen Shapiro, I could be down in the dumps, which is rare, but sometimes Jimmy puts me there when he does his weird shit. Me? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah Jimmy, Jimmy could really work your brain over, as you know, Eileen. And then I talk to you, and I just get so happy. Eileen Shapiro is a happy person. And when you talk to her, her, her smile is contagious. Her laughter is great. And her head, I heard, is incredible. <laughs> and Backpack John just joined us, too. Hey, Backpack John, what's up? Hope all is well, everybody. We're going to have some fun today. 
I'm actually going real quick to the uh, Dave. You like that last line, right? Uh, <laughs> About Eileen gives great head. Mm, I think a Dave would. I'm actually going real quick to. But uh, Dave, you're going to have to get online. You know how many guys are out there looking for Eileen? Seriously, everywhere we go with Eileen, guys hit on her left and right. So everybody, listen up. If you're watching us live right now, run to your Twitter real quick and go to at W4CY Radio. If you're not uh, following them, follow them and then retweet the, the, the top tweet that's up there because it's our show live on Twitter and that way people can watch us on Twitter. It's also on Facebook and I believe it's on Twitch. So if you have like an Xbox or something, you can watch it on your Xbox. I'm wearing my New York City t-shirt in in sort of a uh, paying homage to New York. Um I'm heart sick and heartbroken over what has been done to my city. I love New York City and I love Madison Avenue and I love every street in New York City. And protesting is one thing, but destroying is another. I am very upset. They destroyed my hometown. How would you like it if they destroyed your hometown? Yes, protest. It was a terrible thing that was done to this man. George Floyd. To, yes, to Mr. Floyd. But you know, don't destroy New York City. What did New York City have to do with it? I'm from New York. We were the most liberal people in the world. We had black friends back in the 50s when nobody had black friends. We never thought of black people as anything but people in New York City. They hung out with us. We went to the bars. I danced with them. I went to school with them. I played basketball with my friend Robert. I mean, we were never a prejudiced people. New York City is one of the most liberal cities in the world. And we were liberal way before the rest of the United States. So we just hope, too, though, everybody that's in any city that's having problems, everybody stay safe. Yeah. And uh, and, and but don't I, get involved. I worry about my New York. I really do. And, and of course, these people are running around without masks and they're not six feet apart. And in running, you breathe heavily. So you're shoving your breath out further. And I'm worried about these people that they don't get the flu. And, and perish. I mean, this is a serious time. It's not a time to run around without a mask. Which is 21, I think 21,000 new cases in the last two couple of days. Well, yeah, because of, of the fact of the of the, uh, the the protests. You know, you could, I mean, the wonderful people that protest beautifully, I saw them. They were every color. It was like a rainbow box of color. It was wonderful to see every American, okay, an American. Let's get off these colors. Every New York American walking down the streets protesting, and I was so proud because they did it with elegance and style and respect, and that's who black people are. Black people have elegance. They're the best-dressed people. They have the best manners. You must know that. Black people are far more courteous than white people, I have to say, and they showed it marching beautifully. So don't let the stupid people say, oh, look at them. They're savage. We never should have freed them. Who was it, Wallace or somebody that said that? That black people were primitive and they were savage and don't give them freedom so no, no, quickly. No, but don't even repeat it because people are going to think you're saying no, it. No, I'm not so. saying it. This is, this is not <laughs> me. So don't, don't fuck all those jerks that think that shit anyway. This is a moron back in the 60s that said that black people were primitive and that they were savage and not to give them freedom so quickly because they won't know how to handle it and they'll misbehave. Well, don't make that a point, okay, people? Uh, black people, be be cool, be smart, show the world who you really are. And that don't lose the message. Yeah, and that, you know, we have so, and I'm not saying it like, oh, yeah, my best friends are Jewish, that bullshit. But I have Lily McLeod, who I'm mad about, and I love her so much, and Wendy Moten, who I love so much, and Cece Pensington, who I love so much, and Cece uh, Hendricks. Hendricks. And they're just wonderful people. And that's who we're protesting for, the wonderful black people that are out there who have been unjustly uh, murdered, so, killed. Well, <laughs> I, I hate to use that, who have been unjustly treated by some some police officers, not all police oh, and Jane officers. Doe. Angie Baby says an Angie Baby. <laughs> What's about Angie Baby? Because she's black. Angie's not black. She's Spanish. <laughs> she's half black. <laughs> yeah, her, tit, her, her, her 49Z tits are black. Anyway. You know, you think Eileen Shapiro's got a set of jugs, Dave. You're listening, Dave? You should see Angie Baby's knockers. Anyway. Oh, my God, they're gigantic. Everything is terrible that's going on. Please be safe. Protest uh, yeah, protest beautiful. peacefully. Yeah. Everybody be safe because um, cause we need to, like, actually come to a solution and solve this, and, and it's a very difficult situation. And a The difficult solution is the police have not to be brutally brutal anymore i've had run-ins with the cops trust me in my day 
they're not nice. When you're gay, you have to see how the oh. cops treat us in New York for being gay guys. Called us names. Angela says she's 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 black Italian. <laughs> what the fuck is a black Italian? <laughs> Angie, make up your Jane, mind. Jane, we love you. You're fabulous. Well, Angie, are you Spanish, black, or Italian? Make up your fucking mind. Black and Italian. Anyway. Meanwhile, you should come on our show and wear a push-up bra. <laughs> so Dave Hughes will be very happy. So we want this whole show to be fun, everybody. There's so much tragedy going on in the world. We're going to have a good time today. Yeah, but you know, like, who has it? Martha Luther King said, we shall overcome, and we shall overcome. And we will all be together in... 50 years from now, there'll be no such thing as black, white, or yellow, or brown. We will have all intermarried, and we will be one gorgeous race of people. Because if you see a black that marries an Asian that has white blood, they are the most exquisitely beautiful people. Gorgeous faces. Uh, anyway, our guest is here, so we're going to like move on. Hey, guest is here. If you touch me one more time is to do something, I'm going to punch you right in those four eyes. Anyway, hang see on. See your four eyes? I'll knock those four eyes right down your throat. Isn't he beautiful, you guys? All right. So I'm just getting ready for our let's second. Let it, let's let, I'm getting ready for our second. Let's guest. get our first. Wait guest. a minute. I'm talking. You interrupted. No, I want to get the. I want to get the guest on. Well, one second it takes to talk my talk. <laughs> I'm. I'm just getting ready for our second guest who plays gangsters. There you go. So now we're gonna get our first guest who's coming in. Hello, hello. Say Look something so you. let's make sure we can hear you. This might be the funniest opening I've ever been on for any interview. I'm Eric Alper, and I'm so happy to be here with you too. Hey. Yeah, meanwhile, the women are hating you for that gorgeous hair. Um, <laughs> the hair well, on you. well, you, you know, I'm not going to tell you where the bodies that I hid to get me that hair in the first place. <laughs> I, I believe it. I believe it. So do you do you roll it up at night and I roll it? Volume. I need a um, <laughs> No, no, but 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 I do. You know, put on that shower cap when I'm taking a shower and when I'm doing my nails. That's so funny. So hold Listen, on. We have to up your volume. No, I, I don't. I, I hey, is that something that gets done on your end, uh, Rebel, or do I need to turn my headphones up because it seems kind of low? His he, his end. His speakers have to go up. No, it's on our end. You're the one hearing it. I don't hear. He. I hear him very faintly. Okay, hold on. We got to turn ours up. Then hold on. How's that? How's that? Oh, that's How's that? better. Not really. Oh, there you go. A little bit better. Hold on. I can scream. No, 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 we don't no, want to do that. No, 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 no. I, I'm I in the music speak. business. I'm already deaf. I scream <laughs> really loud anyway. <laughs> I freaking like love that. All right. So what do you do for no, a living? Hold on. We haven't no, even I, introduced him. Well, yet. I want to ask him a question. No, we got to introduce him. What them. do you do for a living besides mug people? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Don't answer the question yet. We're going to okay. go back to that question. All right, everybody. Okay. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, Sirius XM radio host, Music junkie and one of the most famous music publicists in the world, Mr. Eric Alper. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey, it's so good to be here, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Boy, are you big shit, huh? Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know that. what? I'm not, I'm not even the most popular person in my house. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny guy, I'll tell you that. You gotta, I think we're going to have fun. Good sense of humor. But seriously, <laughs> that was quite a buildup. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a Wait. little bit of a fun ride. Oh yes, absolutely. So, I so this is really Ron. very low. I know that's our end. We have to get up there. I can't reach it. Want me to go? <laughs> <laughs> we just yeah. redesigned the studio. He hasn't gotten off the couch since 1947. So you yeah. know. Yeah. No, Jimmy just re we had to redo it because we had Jimmy redid problems. The, Jimmy redid the studio, so therefore nothing is functioning properly. <laughs> Everything on. is fucked up like him. Get your ass out of my face. Hang on. Let's see if we can get this going here. Make him louder. Let's see. Speak. Say. Speak, Eric. Hey, hi, how are you? I'm That's on a good. slant. I have to figure out what this slant is doing. Okay. All right. I, how's that? Okay. Good. I'm going to go. Did it. I'm okay. going to go here. I'm going to go over here now. Why do you, Why do you have glasses on? <laughs> um, so I can actually see what what I'm doing. I feel like I feel like I'm like a leaning tower of Pisa over here, where I'm just like this. But did you reason. ever hear the expression? Girls don't make passes at men that wear glasses. Oh, I thought it was the other way. No, I've never heard that one before. I've never I, heard I, that I, one before. <laughs> I, re I rewrote that. I said, <laughs> girls don't make passes at men that wear glasses. It's supposed to be the other Shut way around. Shut up. I'm fucking speaking. <laughs> Why do you fucking do that? You ruin all my jokes. You were literally fuck. <laughs> It actually, it actually made sense though, because if you're not no, wearing he your glasses, everything. no, He's because a, if, if you don't wear your glasses bro. and a girl comes past at you, you won't see it anyway. 
I, it so was it a makes... very funny joke, and this fuck <laughs> next to me stuck okay, on my line. Go for it anyway, then. Girls don't make passes. At men that wear glasses, unless we grab their asses. There you uh, go. Okay. All right. And you had a jump but the origi- in but with the ori- your big but fucking what's the, ri- what's the original one? The original one is fuck you, Jimmy Star. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the original one is girls don't make pa- guys don't make passes at girls who wear glasses. That's right. No, guys don't ma- make passes at girls that don't show their asses. Oh, I, I didn't know. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, he's on our show, not you, you tank. <laughs> we're married. We're allowed. <laughs> we always argue. So first of all, we also no, have... Wait, we're not met. I'm interrupting him now. Nine years we're married. How I did it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I'm still here. <laughs> but we have a chat room full of people, so say hi to everybody in the chat room and then give a special hi to Eileen Shapiro because she's in the chat room. Hey, everybody. So good to be here. Hi, Eileen. Thank you very much for setting this up and your $100 is in the mail. There did, you did, go. did you ever meet Eileen? I I did. We uh, we sat beside one another at an Adam Ant show that happened in Toronto a couple of years ago. Did where she we happen met. to turn sideways and crush you with her boobs? <laughs> no, she didn't do that. No. <laughs> did you uh, ever see? Did you ever see tits that big in your life? You know what? I I can't um, I can't remember what I did yesterday. So I don't honestly remember a lot from that night, except for it's all kind of a blur. That's because she drugged you and tried to screw you. <laughs> um, she did neither of that, but it was all good. <laughs> she's a lovely woman. She's we our, love her. She's our, my best friend. I mean, she said to me, Ron, you've made my tits so famous. Thank you. <laughs> and I have. <laughs> so before we talk too much, I want to like do some bragging for you. First right. of all, you guys, Eric Alper, if you want to follow him on uh, Twitter, his Twitter is that Eric Alper. Um, his website is that Eric Alper.com. Um, it's E R I C A L P E R. So it's that Eric Alper.com. He's a six time nominee for publicist of the year. By the way, he lives in Canada. You guys, he's a 16 time Juno award winner overseeing PR campaigns, which means that, his clients won the Juno Award, which for for anybody who doesn't know what that is, that's like a Grammy Award. That's the mm. that's the uh, Canadian version of the Grammy Awards, right? Am I right on that? You are exactly right on that. Yeah, but in New York City, the Juno Award is a Spanish award given to Spanish people who say Juno something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. You're supposed to laugh for us. <laughs> <laughs> He's also the host of that Eric Alpers show on Sirius XM channel 167 on the Canada Talks channel. And as a as a publicist and probably an interviewer, he's worked with Ringo Starr. I'm only and he's worked with hundreds, and I say hundreds, I mean hundreds of people, but I only picked out the ones who I like a lot. Um, so he's worked with Ringo Starr, Jerry Lee Lewis, Jerry Garcia, Nickelback, the Smashing Pumpkins, Jordan Knight. Jordan Knight's from New Kids on the Block for anybody who doesn't know. And if you don't like them, screw it. I love them. <laughs> yep. yep. But Duran Duran, Robert Palmer, Chris Christopherson, Snoop Dogg, Taken Back Sunday, who I interviewed a long time ago, The Prodigy, Mick Fleetwood from Fleetwood Mac, Steve Miller, Woo. Deborah Cox, The Cult, Jesus Jones, The English Beat, Barry Manilow, Joan Baez, and Woo. Slash. And then they added like 200 more people. But I just wanted to bring those. And now with Ron Russell, he really completed it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow, that's fabulous. <clears throat> the Bush, was that George Bush? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bush. I anyway, think. did you ever get to meet uh, Fleetwood Mac? Uh, what's her name, who I love? Who Stevie said? Nicks? Stevie, Stevie Nicks. Did you ever meet Stevie? No, I never did. I only met Mick when he was doing his, uh, he did a couple of solo albums that he released um, about 10 or 12 years ago. And then he did an art showing here in Toronto for his artwork. And then the next time that Fleetwood Mac came, I just got to meet him. But, you know, it's one of those situations where when you're that big of a band, you have your own dressing rooms and right. nobody really talked to one another before the show. Right. Well, that's funny. Also, yeah. Paul from Zest Ray. Oh. Wait, you know, you have a wonderful lineup of stars, but you don't have what I have. I have better than you, baby. Because I know Scott Page from Pink Floyd. So fuck you. <laughs> He's oh, interviewed I him. I just talked to him. I, I, I who, had a lovely conversation Scott Page? last week. Don't yeah, you Scott know Page. Scotty? Scotty's a dear friend of Scott, mine. Scott's a genius. Scott, Scott's I amazing. love him. He's, and his wife is wonderful. He's a wonderful person. In our chat yeah. room, too, which which uh, Paul, Paul from Zest Radio is in our chat room. And uh, hey, he, he also mentioned that you worked with Biff Naked because he loves Biff Naked. So we'll give Biff Naked. 
Props, she follows me on Twitter. So, yeah, did you ever great. meet Johnny Mantis? Uh, Connie Francis, did you say? No, Johnny Mantis. Jo no, no. Pity. No, I love Pity. you. Yeah. I have. I have three times. <laughs> so screw you. Three times, Johnny Mantis. Three times. Three. One, two, three. So tell everybody a little bit, because like I, I think I read someplace on that ericalper.com doing a plug for the website that he posts Thanks. all kinds of great content on you guys. Every day he updates new stuff on that ericalper.com. That somehow you got involved in the music industry because somebody in your family like owned the a, a famous blues bar or something. Yeah, there's a bar in Toronto called Grossman's Tavern that started in 1943. And at the time, it was the first uh, place to actually have live music mixed with alcohol it took that long because the city of toronto thought that mixing music and alcohol would bring the entire city to hell in a handbasket and they were kind of right in a way it did uh, but my grandpa yeah and so my grandfather worked there my grandmother worked there my parents worked there our my whole family ended up attending bars but um i have really vivid memories as a kid growing up in that bar and hanging out there and then loving music because i saw i saw music not really as music i just saw it as more of a of a place of community you know as it was a cafeteria so it was a place where where food was eaten and in the in the location of it it's a place called kensington market in in toronto and if okay. anybody's ever been there they know it's yep. like a a huge multicultural city and, yep. and that's exactly the the kind of experience that i grew up in and i i still love to this day so in, in the late 1950s, we used to hop in a car and drive to Toronto from New York and go to the gay bars. They had the cutest guys in, in, in Toronto. They, they still like, do. No, they were like lumberjack guys. You know what I mean? They were like really blonde, sweetie, like beautiful, big, big, burly guys. And I remember the gay bars were very hidden and very secretive back then. You couldn't, uh, was, they were against the law. And yeah. we loved it. We used to go up there like New York trash. And honey, we walked in. <laughs> no, we walked into those bars with our tight pants and tight shirts looking divinely gorgeous. And all those those little Canadian boys would say, oh, you're from New York? Forget it. It's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you know, it's funny, Leo. Or, I mean, not really funny, but it, it's great that you mentioned that. Because even, even when it comes today to the gay pride parade, um, and the gay community, um, the rating of the bathhouses by the Toronto police um, years and years and years ago still is a strong memory um, for one of the reasons why they're uh, why the gay community and the and the the gay pride people um, aren't really big fans of having the the Toronto police um, at their parade. Is it goes back to the way that the Toronto Police Department treated um, Very you know, the gays and lesbians? Yeah, absolutely, everywhere, not just in Toronto, oh, but New uh, York City yeah. too. New York for City. sure. They Absolutely. used to roll us, okay? They would invade, like there was a gay bar in on the in the village I used to hang out in called, um, I forgot now. Anyway, what the hell was it called? Oh, anyway, the cops would come in, and of course we'd sit down, we wouldn't dance or anything, and then they'd say, oh, empty your pockets. And whatever cash we had in our pockets, they would take. They, and leave. they took, yeah. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. And so we didn't have any money to buy drinks, but the owner of the bar, who of course was was fabulous, mafia Italian mafia from Brooklyn, but he was a good guy. He'd say, "Drinks are on the house, kids." And wow, we were able that's to great. Drink. Yeah, what, that's what, great. It? it was like an animal. Like I, forgot. I, I met Sal there. What the hell was it called? <laughs> I don't remember. It's going back, <clears throat> going back for sixty years. So, so anyway. anyway. <clears throat> So Eileen also said you worked with the Wiggles, aren't the, what is the Wiggles? Isn't that like a kids band or something? Yeah, they're one of the largest, uh, the world's largest kids group. Uh, I started working with them really, really early on in their career. Um, and uh, Canada was a huge market for them because Canada was one of the first places where they actually had a television show. So I saw them grow to the size where they were selling three or four nights at the Rogers Center here in Toronto, which holds about 20,000 people. Um, and the nicest, kindest guys and group of people that you'll ever want to meet. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Eileen says she loves them. I don't know who they are now. I got to like go Google oh, it. I, <laughs> yeah. if, 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 it's a ma if it's a male, Eileen loves them. No, but the Wiggles, it's a kid's band. It, 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 it's, it's not it's made a kid's up of kids. It, it, well, what, what's interesting about it is that, you know, they were one of the first kind of kids groups to understand that, the music that they need to create is also for the parents as well. You know, it, it kind of ushered in this whole 
parenting of I'm going to play the Ramones for my kids. I'm going to play the Beach Boys and the Beatles for my kids. And they they were right in there. Um, it's funny because a lot of their concerts, a lot of the parents were like, this is their version of the Beatles. This is, you know, all the kids were freaking out because they saw them on television for months and months and months. And finally they get to see them in person and their songs are phenomenal compared to, I think what, you know, the simplistic style of kids music that, that you and I grew up with, or oh, even, tough. even you two where, you know, instruments weren't even made. It's so funny. Cause it's not even like what I thought it was going to be. Well, when I grew I, up, the music that I grew up to that was sensational, fabulous of the day was it's howdy doody time. It's howdy right. doody time. Sure. Bob Smith and howdy do say howdy Ron doody. loves howdy doody. <laughs> so that was our music. It was it's howdy doody. So how, how faggy can you get than that? I mean, that's really gay. It's yeah. howdy doody. Oh, Wait, who were like, because uh, uh, I think I'm probably older than you, but who were like your musical influences? Like growing up, who did you listen to a lot? Oh, I listened to the early ages of rock and roll. When I was eight years old, I went to go see the movie American Hot Wax that told the story of the Cleveland DJ, Alan Freed. Uh, who coined the term rock and roll and who brought a lot of uh, concerts to, uh, to, to non-segregated audiences. He believed that music was for everybody. Uh, and is. in the movie, they had, um, uh, they had performances by, little, uh, by uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and Chuck Berry and actors portraying Danny and the Juniors and Little Richard, among others. And I walked out of there completely, completely wired. Like it was a shot to my little eight year old brain. And from then on in, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I had no idea how to do it. I just knew that those people on the screen were the coolest people I've ever seen in my whole life. You know, I kind of liken it to when, whenever I, I read about somebody like Tom Petty, for instance, seeing the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show and him saying, I want to do that. I had that moment for American hot wax. I knew I didn't play an instrument. I still can't play an instrument. I suck at everything musical, but I knew <laughs> that somehow I wanted to be in the, in this industry. So I had to find a way in it. And at 12 years old, I got a subscription to billboard magazine. And I read about these labels like Motown records and Stax records and Smithsonian folkways label. And I just had to figure out how to do it. And I loved the media. I loved reading stories. And I thought, you know, maybe, you know, maybe I'll do publicity for these people because they seemed like they got to hang around all these musicians without actually having to play an instrument. What a cool way to do it, though, because like I have Ron's very musical. I'm not musical at all, but I love it. And yeah, but yeah, the, be the best, best music I ever heard in my entire life was when George Washington would whistle a song through his wooden teeth. It was incredible how he did that. <laughs> <laughs> he would do Yankee Doodle Dandy whistling through wooden teeth. Yeah, yeah, and and back then the uh, Billboard Hot 100 with the Billboard Hot One. And so, yeah. <laughs> so for me, like, cause my first concerts that I went to were Rod Stewart, uh, Rod Stewart, like when Do You Think I'm Sexy, which I think I was right. like, in seven, I was in seventh grade when that came out, and Kiss. Yeah, that was in 1978. And Kiss, that and yeah. that and Kiss were my like two first concerts, and my first record I ever got was Elton John. Uh, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Right. So you're definitely a 70s kid. Yeah, me I'm too. I'm a I, 70s kid. I, I saw ABBA when I was eight with my parents. I saw Barry Manilow live. And then I saw Genesis when I was 11 years old. I went with my sister, and that was a mind blowing oh experience. My God. Genesis is like, awesome. Yeah, and when all, I, all, all that stuff you, you, you chase. Like, that's what it really is for a lot of people who are more than just your casual music fan is that those three first shows blew my mind I, and too. and now you know when i go to a show that's still that contact high that i'm that i'm still chasing you know that wide-eyed this is awesome and i've never seen anything like this before i think well, turn it on live turn it on turn it on live the live version by genesis is like one of the when i was in college oh. i used to listen to it over and over and over and over and over like all the time oh he's going to show us something now i'm going to show you something right here <laughs> Right on the wall, there's three sides live. Uh, I don't know if I can show it. Oh, uh, there it is. Yeah, you go. Three sides live. Yeah, I love that. Eileen says her first concert was Rod Stewart and the Who together, and Paul from Zest Radio says Rush, which Rush was uh, Rush is another awesome one. My first concert was in 1957 at the Westbury Music Fair on Long Island, and it was Johnny Mantis singing Chances Are. So, fuck all of you. <laughs> He loves Johnny Mathis. Yeah. So now you went from a big screen to there we go. There we go. We're back to I a big met, screen. I met there Johnny, we go. I met All Johnny. Right. I met Johnny three times. 
one time I was shopping in a supermarket with him. We were both doing our groceries and we chatted. And when we got to the checkout, I said to the kid, do you know who this is? He said, no. I said, this is Johnny Mantis. He said, oh, hello, whoever you are. I said, you really <laughs> know who Johnny Mantis is? And Johnny turned to me and he said, Ron, nobody knows who I am except people your age. And I think that's sad because in America, music is dated. Europe, music is for hundreds of years. You yeah. can talk to an 18-year-old about a Verdi opera, and they know all about it. So yeah. I think that we really have to know that music is culture in our country. And we've had some groups over the years who were phenomenal. And we have to preserve their memory. We have to talk about them and let people know that people like Johnny Mantis or people like Pink Floyd or any of the groups... They were phenomenal people, and that music should be forever. It should, yeah, oh, it's, wait, wait, old, it's old music. Yeah, well, what's interesting about that that thought, and I and I totally totally agree with you. You know, when I was a kid, and I and I was watching, you know, whether it was Hee Haw or Sha Na Na, I mean, that was celebrating the music of the past, and I think. Um, I think America and Canada both um, like to pride themselves on being modern, being current. They don't really look at the past except to trot out some of these artists once a year during the Grammy Awards or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, you know, even with radio, which, you know, growing up in the 70s, uh, uh, hit radio would play anything that was a hit. I heard Johnny Ray for the first time on the radio in the 70s and to... Uh, to that experience of listening to Buddy Holly mixed with Boston or BTO or the Guess Who back to back to back, it would be like the equivalent of a radio station now playing something current like Billie Eilish mixing with Pink Floyd. It just it'll never happen again. Um, even though that thanks to the iPod and music streaming services, we all have access to you know a hundred years worth of music. We have access to fifty seven million songs at our disposal, but yet the media and especially conglomerate radio stations continue to want to push out the new look you and i or, or the three of us we're well out of radio demographic for oh, a way out of <laughs> way out of it you know and so you know when classic rock stations are now playing music from 1995 and 1996 you may think oh my god that's so new but it's not that's 25 years ago that's the equivalent of, of, <laughs> yeah, of but us you know what growing up in the 70s listening to music from 1945 <laughs> You know, you know what's what I mean? wrong with America? America has a saying, and they live by the saying, and that saying is, it's in. And if it's not in, it's out. Right. And right. that's the trouble. Music is always in. Music is what satisfies your ears. Everybody has a different ear for music. Yeah. So you just can't yeah. say that one music is in, like rap. I do not like rap. I never did like rap. I never will like rap because rap to me is not singing. It's talking ridiculously with stupid words to crappy music. So that's my opinion of rap. But to someone else, it's wonderful. I they love, love it. it. See, Jimmy loves it. I love it. So yeah, yeah I, I, I think I. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's also when you listen to the radio. I, I think you know there's there's a definite. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Billie Eilish got into trouble because uh, an interviewer asked her if, the, if, if she'd ever heard of uh, Van Halen before. And she said no. Um, and rightfully so. She's a 16-year-old girl. Yeah, she's 18. Well, no. you know, oh, I mean, when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're 16, you know, you, you kind of, you know, you, you, unless you grew up in a, in a home of, of maybe older brothers or sisters or your parents like in classic rock, um, you know, it, it's tough to want to listen to older music. And I think that's part of it with, with the new generation of, of, uh, of musicians or people on the Hot 100 chart. There's a real separation between what is now and them using the influences from today. You know, even when we were growing up and listening to music and watching MTV in the 80s, they were directly influenced by what was going on in the 1970s with Roxy Music and Rod Stewart. And they were influenced by the blues men. Now you, so there's always that direct line between what, happened 50 years ago with the current state of music and now it's just not really available uh or seen as easily on the chart you know there's nothing absolutely nothing wrong with drake but his influences really stop maybe a couple of years ago maybe yeah. they use a sample from you know some uh you know lesser known disco song but it, they didn't learn how to create music based on slowing 45 record down to 16 RPM so they can learn the riff. That stopped basically but, around 2000. You know, there are those that have survived and gone on. I remember a hundred years ago when there was a group called Patty and the Patty and the Bells. Right. 
Yeah. And now she's Patty LaBelle. You know, yeah. and Patty LaBelle is still f- outrageously famous as, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And some people do go on and on. The Beatles have gone on and on. Everybody knows the Beatles. If you don't know who yeah. the Beatles are today, you would live in a coma. But, um, yeah, but I'll, I'll, but but all people don't but, know who they are. But then Allen, Van Halen, Van Halen. When I say Van Allen, <laughs> Van 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 Halen was like fucking big. So hold on. First yeah. of all, I'm a big Billie Eilish fan, and I listen. I I I switch my Spotify playlist, so I listen to a lot of seventies and eighties stuff because that's really what I love. Um, but I listen yeah. to the new stuff just to be aware of what it is. And I'm a big Billie Eilish fan. Some of her her songs are, are phenomenal. Um, so I don't so, even know who she is. She's like the hottest thing right now. She, What's her name? Yeah. Billie, Billie Eilish. She's like a little sixteen-year-old girl who sold like yeah, millions she, of records. She wanted to be Billy Idol, so she changed no, her Billie name. Eilish. Well, it sounds like Billy. She's Idol. fabulous. She's a really good artist. She's very different than everybody else. She doesn't sound like anybody else. Right. So, yeah. so how about you with Van Halen? So, are you a Sammy Hagar or a David Lee Roth Van Halen fan? I like David both of them Lee, actually. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna play Mill of the Road. I I like <laughs> both of them for very different reasons. But I, but I will tell you this though. Um, when 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 I got into Van Halen, it was for the 1980. Four album um and so that was the one with jump on it yeah and, and so i had no idea in the 1970s just how massive they really were um but you know when they started having hits that was that was like the biggest band in in the world um and then when sammy came along it just seemed like they kind of toned down a lot of the antics and and started writing you know love songs i mean why can't this be love is something that david lee roth would have never would have never run or even sung yeah. to himself he was, anyway. He was on television back in those days more than any other rock star. I remember him being constantly on TV. Totally. In well, he was everything. That. Yeah, he was He was everything that you wanted in a rock star and stuff. I mean, you know, he was is... super big, super big. I, you I, look like yeah. a rock star, though. You look like you could be a rock star with the hair. I, I feel like a rock star with you two in the room. This yeah. is great. <laughs> well, all you have to do is make believe you play a guitar. Have somebody ghost it for you. I can lip sync pretty well. I, I I'm really great in my car with when it comes to, to drumming on the steering wheel. So sure actually the guy, as as the, the guy Dave in the the guy Dave in the oh Paul I mean in the chat room says he'll teach you how to play drums. <laughs> Excellent. And That's somebody awesome. Else, somebody else in the chat room they were talking about uh, their first concert was uh, Judas Priest and. We, um, I love that movie Rockstar, which you know that's loosely based on the whole Judas Priest thing. And yeah. we had the guy who replaced Rob Halford on our show uh, after he got out of Judas Priest. After he was only in it for a little while. I forgot his name. Yeah. Do you know the guy's name? Uh, I don't. I don't. But but to the guy who's, uh, whose first show was Judas Priest, it's funny. I just finished reading a book by Chuck Klosterman called Fargo Rock City, and it's about him growing up uh, in Fargo. Um, uh, and the metal scene and the hard rock scene was like their commercial AM radio station. So that was a little bit of a mind blowing experience because people tend to forget that not everybody in America had MTV all at the, all at the same time. And, you know, when we wanted to find out about our favorite rock stars, we had to wait for the new issue of Rolling Stone magazine and hope and pray that somebody in that magazine happened to write about the band, which was rare uh, or that we would read yes. Rang magazine and stuff, you know? So you know, it was Tim that, Owens. That, that, that's what happened. Yeah. Tim, and, and, Tim Ripper and Owens. Funny. Well, because well, you know, there's a story. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Go ahead. It was Tim Ripper Owens who uh, replaced Rob Halford right. for a couple of years. And that's what that movie Rockstar is based on. Mark Wahlberg <laughs> is was Tim Ripper Owens uh, yeah. in that film. You know what? Here's here's a mind blowing here here's a mind blowing truth uh, uh, you know that's going on. Because you guys brought up the Beatles and it's interesting because you know, whenever people say, Oh, you know, the Beatles will never die. And sometimes on Twitter I'll ask a question every couple of months. Um, and, uh, you know, I ask questions every day, but one of them that I always bring out is like, you know, in 50 years or a hundred years from now, which artists are still going to be remembered. And, you know, people of fans will always say things like, you know, I'll get a whole bunch of K-popers saying BTS, which is never going to happen. Right. But, never. you know, but like, you know, people will always bring out like the Beatles or Chuck Berry. And I think, you know, maybe those two, but if you go, if you go to Google searches, you'll find that the who the Rolling Stones and the Beatles three of the biggest bands in the world that you think will never die. Their actual Google searches are dropping almost 15% every single year of the last 15 years. And that means that a whole new generation of people aren't really looking for the Beatles so much on Google. Now that's just on Google. That doesn't mean that they know how to type in the Beatles on Spotify and find them easily. But even things like Wikipedia searches are showing that they're kind of dropping in terms of, of, of the amount of people 
that are looking for them. And that's a, that's not a scary thought. It's just, I think the truth is like, while the past gets far behind, as much as we can say, I love 60s music, very few people can actually name more than five or six bands. When you ask them point blank, they'll come up with Jimi Hendrix or The Who or The Rolling Stones and The Beatles. But then there were still 5,000 bands every single year that seemed to yeah. sell out. Yes, you but, know? The one, but that's the what one, happens. The one name that will be remembered in music forever is Pia Isadora. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We had her on as a guest a couple weeks ago. She, she was fabulous. How was she? Was she amazing? She was I amazing. Amazing, right? She, I get the feeling like she would be amazing. As she a guest. was wonderful. I love her to pieces. We're going to meet. She's coming to our house to a party. She is absolutely the best. I love her. I, uh, I, I'll, 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 I'll say it now. I, I had a little bit of a weak crush on her growing up, her and Samantha Fox. Oh, she was smoking she's hot. Still, she's Samantha still. Fox is smoking hot still, too. They're both still smoking yeah. hot. She's still yeah. adorable at her age. She's a tiny little beautiful woman still. And what, what, other, what other role in life could you be except awesome and a celebrity with the name Pia Zadora? Like, <laughs> it's just, like, that's a name... That just rings. It, it's so beautiful. That's great. Right. She is also. Yeah. Uh, she's just fabulous. So tell everybody real uh, a little bit about your show. You got a show. It's called That Eric Alper on uh, Sirius. Tell us a little bit about it so we can get you some more listeners. Yeah. So it's a one-hour talk show that's available on the SiriusXM network, which is free right now, actually, until the end of June uh, for everybody. And it's, and it's a one-hour talk show that I talk to musicians, uh, musicians that I love, musicians that have a really great story. And I never go too inside baseball too much. I don't really care what kind of guitar they used or what kind of pedals they used. Other people do that really, really well. But to me, music is still magic to me because I don't get it. I don't play it. So I'm coming at it from a, definitely a fan perspective. Uh, and, you know, recent guests I've had on uh, include Bob Geldof and James Taylor. But it's also, you know, really new independent artists that I love that, uh, you know, I just get to sit down with them for 20 minutes and talk. So oh uh, I love I it. Love I've been doing it for five really? years now. Can I am a huge James Taylor fan. Big, big, yeah. big, big, big. <laughs> can 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 we hear your show on the car radio? Yeah, absolutely. It's on channel one sixty seven. Canada okay. Talk. Some okay. stations don't have it because I think for the for in order for Sirius XM to come uh, in Canada, it they had to take off a couple of channels. I think they're regional music channels that you get in the um, that you only get in America. But if you go online to SiriusXM.ca or .com, and if you have an online subscription, then you can see it there too. Yeah, you know, we wanted to be on Sirius, but they wouldn't have us because they said our show was dirty. I have no <laughs> idea what the fuck they're talking about. But why the fuck they think our show is, is a dirty fucking show? You could absolutely be on there. You know, no, far be it for me to tell them what to be. Our yeah, sub but no, our you go to a studio? Do you go to a studio to do your show? I, I do. I do. In the last couple of weeks, I've done, I've done it from this little bunker here. But I've just been told in the last couple of hours that I'm going back in the uh, we're we're gonna get some equipment for me to do my show here at home over the next uh, three or four weeks. There you go. That's awesome. It would be yeah. fun to be on Sirius. We don't have a studio new near us in Palm See, Springs. See, we're unfiltered and we're uncensored. He so said we... you can curse on Sirius. You've yeah. got your audience right where you need them and right where you. Yeah, want. we love you, it. We could. You curse. don't need Sirius to have yeah. it on there. In the car radio, you can curse. <laughs> What if sure. there are children there and they hear me say you fucking Sure whore. you can. You just have to be on a dirty channel. Yes, I'm going to be on a dirty one, channel. <laughs> 100 all the way up. That's such when you, class. When you, when you get I love a, well, well, I mean, when you get a Sirius XM subscription, you have a choice. You can get all the clean channels, which is like, I think, channels, like all the news channels and all the music channels, but even they'll filter out swear words in their music. And then there's about... There's probably about, I think, a half dozen or a dozen channels where it's completely unfiltered. Um, and that's an extra option that you have to just click the box to get all the dirty ones. So, Jimmy, look into it. Oh, that's hilarious. I, I can't wait to tell my friends I'm on the dirty network. <laughs> <laughs> the seedier side of Sirius XM. I'm on, I'm on filthy network NBC or something. Filthy. Yeah. Filthy I'm, on, oh, here we are. I, I'm on the filthy network. Filthy Network, F U K. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta like love the whole thing. Um, so, how's everything going with the quarantine? There, are you guys like, are you really stuck inside all the time? Yeah, you know what you re you realize what an introvert you are when there's a pandemic going on outside and nothing in your personal life has changed. Um, <laughs> it, it's it's so true. 
Um, you know what? I, I went from 950 tour dates on the schedule to work along with all the new releases to zero when it came down to the tour date. Um, but all of the artists I'm working with, they've ramped up their releases. I've got a band that's made seven different videos for the same song just because they're creative and they can do it. So um, the roster is, is, is active every single day. Um, along with the media that I'm able to get for them. Um, every day I'm getting them to do something fun. Yesterday was um, was working with the Canadian Music Therapy Trust Fund to post about their favorite album of all time. And and that amazing organization uh, posted their words on their social media network. Um, there's an organization called Shop Local, which I'm sure is, is throughout every plant, uh, every country right now where they put the focus on, uh, on restaurants and bars and, and stores that are open. Um, so the so the artists are posting about three local shops that they love that are online just to kind of help them out. And so those shops are sharing their stuff online. So That's every nice. day I find them something to do to keep us both sane, because I think now more than ever before, because we're all stuck at home, everybody's watching something. Everybody's watching their computers or they're on social media. And we're never going to have another time to collectively get this active audience than ever before. Right. So now tell me, are you married? Do you have a girlfriend? I, I am. Or are I you am. Married? All three. Um, <laughs> You're uh, all three. You're married. I'm, I'm married. Nope. I'm celebrating my 20th uh, anniversary of marriage in uh, September. We have a 17 year old daughter who's a superstar in her own right. Her name is Hannah. And she's on social media at that Hannah Elper. And she's an activist. She's also a blogger and an author of a best selling book called Momentous that she wrote when she was uh, 16 years old. Good. Um, good. And so, yeah, so it's a busy, it's a busy house. So now Hannah's online doing her schoolwork. Uh, my wife, Candice, is working hard at a, with a nonprofit organization as well. And we're busy. We're, we're busy. And we're lucky because we just happen to all work at things that weren't really affected by not only the riots going on, right. but also what was going on with the pandemic, you know? Um, but I completely understand and I see, you know, how, how the entertainment industry has been devastated and rightfully so. There are just sectors of the industry that just, I was, you know, I, I look when the pandemic happened and they, they brought us all inside, I went outside and I screamed for three seconds and I came back inside and I was just like, let's get to work because nobody's going to wait for us and nobody's going to care. So a lot of these artists were a little bit scared and a little bit skeptical of going online and doing these living room concerts. But now every single one of the artists everybody's I work with it. are doing, everybody's doing it. Technology has, has grown up and maybe this is going to be the new normal. Because let's face it, I don't think that we're going to be able to go see a concert until at least summer 2021. So this is what we're stuck with. Not until there's a cure or a, or, or a vaccine. I don't uh, even think that's it. You know what? There, there's a study that came out a couple of days ago from the Canadian music industry side, um, and almost 70% of people don't want to go to a large venue, even if there was a vaccine. Um, and uh, you know, they're they're a little bit they're a little bit scared of it. But who's to say though? Where are you guys living? Where are you guys living right Palm now? Springs, Palm California. Springs, California. Okay, so you have a large. Uh, so California must have somewhere in the neighborhood of at least 3000 performing arts centers all the way up. You know, I can't imagine Look, California is, is the population size of Canada. Canada is only 33 million people. You guys have 36, 37 million. Who's to say that even in Toronto where I live that, you know, there should be 150 bars that have venues of 200 people or more. Who's to say where you're living, we should all have in our city seven or eight venues with 20,000 people. There, I think that some of these places are going to either scale down to eight or 9,000 people and space out their seats a little bit more, or some of them are just going to close down completely. You know, um, you know, we've never been in this situation before in all of our history and all of our lives. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Though. It's going to go to, it's going to, everybody's going to be just same way. Like we've been streaming what we've been streaming for. We're on our 13th year. We've been on the air a long wow. time. Um, wow. So we've been streaming for a very long time, but, uh, but I think everything is going to go to streaming. You know, there's going to yeah. be more platforms coming in. You already see like, yeah. like everybody's buying everybody and, and all the new stuff's going to be coming out. So this is the future. You know, we were just doing it way before everybody else. Yeah, what's going to be really interesting, I think, is when all of these um, all these businesses, especially in Canada, where you know we're really really lucky. Not only do we have a tremendous government support on the on the city level and on the provincial level, but also on a national level as well. 
Canada has long supported the arts. I mean, to the tunes of tens of millions of dollars to not just the music industry, but the theater industry and film and television industry as well. Um, you know, and yet businesses like the banks and beer companies have always stepped up to help support with sponsorship. That will be interesting for me to watch because, you know, all of these banks and big corporations who have long supported the arts, I'm wondering if they're going to start to pull perhaps some of that funding that they would give to music and the arts and put it back into you know, buying up advertising and developing their more like a, more of a brand to bring people back when things are back up to normal. Um, so, you know, as much as as, you know, whatever side of the fence you are in corporate sponsorship, um, that corporate sponsorship may not be there in the way that we know it comes seven or eight or nine months from now. Yeah, everything is going to totally like be changed. I like love it. So, everybody, this is Eric Alper. His website is that Eric Alper dot com. Uh, T H A T E R I C A L P E R dot com. Check it out. I looked at it today. It was really cool. He tweets out all kinds of fun music stuff, and he also has a lot of like helpful music stuff on his site. You can follow him on Twitter. It's also that Eric Alper, and his show on Sirius is that Eric Alper on Channel One Sixty Seven. You guys, it's the Canadian Canada Talks Channel. And what time is your show on again? Uh, noon six eight on Saturdays, and noon and four p.m. on Sundays, and available to stream anytime you want. There you go. You got to like love it. Anyway, you're a cool guy. A fun, fun oh, you interview. guys are great. I love being no, here. You're great. great. Thank you for coming on our show and making us happy. And everybody loves your hair for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's nothing short of, of an honor to talk to you guys and a real pleasure. And thank you so much uh, for bringing back, my hey, Eric, Thank you, you so much. And everybody follow him in social media. Check out his website. He's a really great guy. And, and anytime anything interesting comes up, and if you really know James Taylor, like send him our information. We want right. him. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely all. You Thank got you it, guys. So much. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. We'll Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What a cool guest. Everybody in the chat room like loved him too, you guys. And everybody in the chat room was talking about all the different concerts that they went to, which is really cool. And um uh Dave Hughes was saying that uh he just he just uh, judged some kind of competition with Beverly Knight. If you could get Beverly Knight our information, like I am a huge Beverly Knight fan. I know she's not that popular in the United States like she is in England, but she's one of the greatest singers like on the planet. And she I, has a song know, called Gold that is awesome. I know the name. No, so she's she's fabulous. She's got to be big if I know the name. Yeah. It's just, it's just, and, and B. Claudia joined us in the middle of all that. Hey, B. in hey, Germany, B. how are you? Hi, darling. How are you? Hope everybody's doing good. And um, we appreciate everybody tuning in. It's going to be fun. Let me do a quick commercial about all the places you can hear our show and we want to thank everybody who tunes in every week and listens to us on uh on a podcast or on any of the networks and right now we're streaming on on facebook uh youtube twitter and i think twitch um but it's a lot of fun and uh you can hear us live on our, our regular showtime, 12 to 2 or 3 to 5 p.m. on Wednesdays on our home station, W4CY Radio, the greatest station on the planet. You can also hear us on K4HD Radio in L.A., Jackalope Radio in St. Louis, um, iHeart Radio, which we love it if you guys listen on there so we can keep getting ranked there because we love it. We're on Stitcher, Audio Boom, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker, Apple TV, Podbean, Spotify, and Pandora. And on television, you can see the videos. If you're not watching them on the W4CY YouTube channel, you can also see them on our YouTube channel, Comcast, Roku, and Vimeo. And if you're watching us right now, please subscribe to the W4CY uh, YouTube channel so they can build up some subscriptions because it's all kind of new for them and and uh, that way we have more people tuning in and watching. We want to thank Eric Alper for coming on. He was great. And we want to thank uh, Eileen introduced him to me. And uh, what a great guy. I, I tweet with him all the time. You guys, he's a really cool guy, very knowledgeable uh, about the music industry. And it's all really, really fun. Look at like the dog kind of woke up. <laughs> Good, because I'm going to sleep. It's so boring. Oh, come on. You really are, Jimmy. You're a bore. They said thank you for the <laughs> shout out. I'm not a bore. My voice, you know, I had a thing. They went down to my throat endoscopy i had endoscopy the other day you know i believe at, on my Monday. Age, at my age you get every test i've had every test known demand so far and thank god everything has come back negative i had a up my butt thing colonoscopy colonoscopy and i had the doctors in the in the room hysterical because the one doctor that was working with me i suspected was gay and i said to him you know, be gentle i'm a virgin and he said i doubt that <laughs> i said you don't believe me ask my husband but anyway then when, when the operation was over and my doctor came in i said well is it twins or, or did i lose the baby 
<laughs> anyway, you have to have a sense of humor in this crazy world we live in. So now I have just one more test to do. And that is, uh, I forgot. Oh, they have to scan my brain because my mother died of an aneurysm at 80. So they have to scan my brain to make sure there's nothing going on there. And when that comes back negative, I want to tell you folks, I have the metabolism in the body of a 40-year-old. So I should be around another 10 years. Absolutely. One more. Absolutely. You and the dog. Me and the dog. The maybe, dog. May, maybe I have a new husband. You guys, the dog is the cu cutest dog. Astro is really the cutest dog on the planet. He really is. He's very, very attached to Ron. If he leaves, uh, if Ron leaves the house, he sits and whines for hours until Ron comes he back. Um, so even though he likes me, you know, Ron is definitely his favorite. And he freaks out without him. And he looks, he just sits. Sometimes he'll just sit there and stare and that's it he'll just he stare he just stares at ron like like with goo goo eyes like like a little girl in love so in love like all the boys do when they sing and Teresa, don't worry ron's fine she said don't worry you with all, worry her with all your tests no 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 listen to me folks out there everybody i've just turned 80 years old okay at 80 years old your body wants to die it's looking for something to kill you so you've got to go and have every test known to man to make sure that you could nip it in the bud in case there's something brewing. I am not ill. I haven't any symptoms of anything that br brings me to a doctor. I'm doing this because this is the intelligent thing to do. Like I bring my car in and I have my car diagnostically, you know, serviced. What's wrong? And they fix it. If you want to live from 80 to 90, you better repair what's broken or going to break because you're not going to make it. So don't be a fool. If you feel great at 80, that's terrific. Good for you. But go and get every test to make sure that nothing is brewing. See, I'm happy. I got a clear head because I know I'm healthy. There you go. We love it because we want them to be around a long time. You're full of shit. Oh, you want my money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wants my home, my car, and my jewels. Yes. <laughs> Uh, B says it's very important that you do the test so she thinks no, it's No, it great. is so important. You have to, you know, maintain your body like you do your auto. If the red light goes on in your car, you bring it in. Well, when you're 80, that's a friggin' red light. Believe me, a big, bright red light. You're old. Go get fixed. I also want to say, uh, rest in peace, you guys. Chris Truesdale died yesterday. And uh, for that? anybody who knows Chris Truesdale, he was, um, he was, uh, uh, he was on The Voice, and he was a Broadway star, and he did it was in a bunch of movies, and he was also one of the members of Dream Street. For anybody who liked uh, Dream Street, the boy band, I met him several times and was working with him to release one of his records. And so it's for me, it's a sad thing, but he's very cool. And um, uh, it looks like Paul from Zest Radio is leaving. He says, thanks for bringing joy into our lives. Great show. Got to go for now. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. And um, go leave us. See if I care. And B. Claudia got donated to Dogs for Our Brave and got like a thank you letter, I think, from them, which is very uh, good. Cool yes, about. They're, they're wonderful people, uh, Andy and Marilyn. They're wonderful people. I and also want to thank everybody, especially Anton, if he's still in there. Anton and Teresa Sabin, because uh, they're always sharing Jimmy Star's World blog. Uh, on on social media, and I want to thank you because it has definitely helped me a lot. And the Jimmy Stars World blog is now ranked uh, number fifty of the top hundred top hundred entertainment blogs in the world. Um, it's also ranked six thousand two hundred ninety nine in the United States out of like eight hundred million uh, websites, and it's ranked like seventy thousand or sixty eight thousand or something out of one point eight billion websites. So I want to thank everybody for reading all the gossip that I like throw up there every day. And appreciate all the support and continued support because I want to like catch Perez Hilton. Yeah, but you know what? Those numbers are wonderful numbers, but I wish they were dollar numbers. I wish they were dollar numbers Not too. Not just glory numbers. You got a lot of glory numbers. Get some dollar numbers. I'm, I'm working Ooh. on it. Like $60 million. <laughs> that would be nice. I would like for Jimmy to say, you know, I'm so happy that I just got $60 million. Who gives a shit about 60,000 people? $60 million. Also, if you're an angel <laughs> investor or financial investor and you see my tweets, I've got 26 movie projects. I'm looking for funding. Uh, anybody who's uh, who's listening, who wants to get involved in movies, I've got them from all different like uh, different budgets, from 150,000 to like 15 million. So if you're interested in it, please uh, uh, hit me up on social media. I'm at Dr. Jimmy Star on Twitter, at Dr. Jimmy Star on Instagram, and Jimmy Star on Facebook. 
And the come on is, if you've ever wanted to be a movie star, now is your chance. Invest a couple of million in a film and you will have a major role and your premiere as an actor will be. So suckers, come up with a million bucks so you could be in a film. Everybody's doing that nowadays. Everybody. I like these people that are producers. They put 50,000, 20,000 in and they get a producer title. Years ago, that was unheard of. That's funny. That's the way it <laughs> is now. now. Every, everybody and their mother's a producer. And I love it because these, these $2 investors say, oh, my film. Have you seen my film? Your film. Where's your film? You're just saying that because there's one particular person you don't like. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's a, Angie Baby, you know what I'm talking about. Angie Baby's in the chat room. She says the films are great. And we just have uh, Angela is working on a film with us. Uh, it's actually uh, not really with us. Angela's got a film. It's called Is It Compatible? Is that the one they just released a trailer for, Angela? Let us know. Go on YouTube, you guys, and Google it. That's a brand new film, I think, uh, directed by Joe Kelly, and he's in it, maybe. Yes, it's called Compatible. So go and check out the trailer. It's on YouTube now. It's also on Angela Joseph's uh, uh, Facebook page, I'm sure. It's a great trailer. It's going to be a great movie, and it's going to be coming out, I guess, sometime later this year if they've already got a trailer going for it. So check and, it all out. And Angie cannot hold back the press because the press is going crazy. Hollywood is all upside down about it. They're screaming from the rooftops. Ron Russell is going to be in Clown Motel 2. And people are, people, are, people are rioting in the streets. They're trying to break in our doors to kiss me, hug me, and ask me for an autograph. And I say, I really can't. I just have no time. So Angie Baby, knock it off with the publicity about me making your movie famous and fabulous. <laughs> you know, right? Tell Joe it's, Kelly. It's so great. Without me, he's just nobody. And you guys should follow uh, follow Angela Joseph in social media, you guys. If you go on Twitter, she's Shared Economy US. Shared Economy US. Uh, she's really one of those most fabulous people you will ever meet. She's a dear friend. She works very, very hard. She's my darling friend. And she's really fabulous. So you guys should follow her because she's just super cool. And if you do follow her, be careful because the line of men following her is very long. She's got a chest on her, boy. Woo, woo, woo. For you guys out there that like tops, boy, oh, boy, she built. Say something, John. I'm looking. Oh, I was thinking. No, I was thinking because uh, B was writing something about Netflix, which reminds me, you guys, if you like dance movies, High Strung Free Dance came mm. out on Sunday on Netflix. It's what Michael, a movie. Michael and Janine Damien uh, is, uh, are the ones who like wrote it and did it. It stars Harry Jarvis, Thomas Doherty. And uh, another Doherty, I forgot her name, but it's a beautiful movie. It's a fabulous movie. Everybody should see it. It's on Netflix. I mean, I, it's on I Netflix loved now. It. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. One more time. I friggin' loved it. It's a movie different from all movies. You go in miserable, you come out smiling and happy. Michael, you did a brilliant job. Janine, you wrote a fabulous movie. And we're going to have them on our show soon to talk about it. Yeah, you guys. That's Michael Damien and Janine Damien, dear, dear friends of ours, who did a beautiful movie. Yeah. Just like, it's really fabulous. Just like, just like um, Marcel Waltz had uh, Sarah French in his film called Blind, and it's a film that I love and adore. I said it was the best horror film I've seen all year so far, and uh, everyone should really buy it, look at it, go see it. It's more of a thriller than it is a chop em up kill em movie. Uh, very good. Sarah French was absolutely fabulous in this movie, and Marcel did a brilliant job of directing. Yeah, it's a really, really good movie, and it's going to have distribution. It's going to have action figures. It's going to have a costume for Halloween this year. Right. And also, Clown Motel 1. Now, don't go buying it thinking you're going to watch a horror movie. This movie is so funny and so great. I can't give it away, but there are scenes in it that are a riot. One with a pig, a guy that one of the one of Hammy. The, Hammy, one of the <laughs> one of the one of the clowns is a pig. Anyway, I think I have to talk to Joe and Angie about it. I think when they wrote it, they thought it was going to be a very serious, scary movie. Well, it turned out to be high camp. It's as wonderful as Killer Tomatoes and as wonderful as Clown. What is it? I love the clown. Oh, uh, uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I put Clown Motel right there with it. It is totally enjoyable, fun, a great film to watch. I, I, I fucking flipped out from it. It was funny as all hell. But don't go there thinking you're going to get scared. It's more fun than it is frightening. But then again, young kids see that she stuff, wrote, they get scared. Wrote, she wrote, oh, no, not Hammy. 
laugh out loud. No, always, oh, we always love, can't be Ron. No, we love Hammy. You know, Hammy's on my Facebook page. He's Johnny Parati. Yeah, Johnny Parati, and I love him. He's such a sweetie pie. So anyway, I, is he going to be in Clown 2, Inge? Oh, I'm sure. Let me hear. It says, Teresa says you're a superstar. Which, by the way, if you guys want to get another movie, Clown Fear is still at Walmart. I saw it there the other day. What's Clown Fear? The movie you were in. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you know why? No, you know why? It was supposed to be called Circus Road. Yeah, which is a way better. Actually. And I am so used to it being referred to. And uh, Sadie Katz and I still call it Circus Road because Sadie wrote it. So when I hear the clown feel, I got to quickly use my brain to say, which movie is that? Because there's so many clown movies out. But I think the title Circus Road was a hell of a lot way more better. scary because that's where me, my character, uh, the, the priest, the minister sends the people that he's defrauded to get killed by the killer clowns down that road. And I thought it made more sense than clown fear because, you know, you're really not fearing these clowns. They're crazy people dressed up like clowns that, that live in a hick town that kill people. Anyway, it's a good movie. It's all right. Go watch. It's okay. It's not the best, but go. I was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You can also go to Ron Russell's Set the Record Straight on YouTube, where he's got all his interviews with all his celebrities, and he's also got clips for that on there. You'll see my acting ability. You're acting real. One movie I play a nasty cop. Another movie I play a gay minister. And the third movie I'm in, which is coming out and I can't wait, is The Big Friggin' Rat. Churchill, Thomas J. Churchill film that promises to be a sensational film. And there I play Paulie, a hood mafioso from Brooklyn who's there to chop a guy up. Anyway, this is a good way to segue into our next guest. Who's who, not here yet. Who always plays mafia hoods and killers. So he and Not I, always, but a lot. Well, <laughs> like me, I'm, I'm always, but a lot. You know, that's all they ever cast me as. I. B wants to know what you think of the fact that, like, now everything is premiering on streaming because there's no more cinema. She, I, so I, I, told cinema. Jimmy, I told Jimmy this three or four years ago that the reason they put these kind of seats in the movie theater recliners and now you're allowed to have cocktails in the theater is because they wanted to keep attendance up with these with the new screens that we have and the new way to project tv you could do a six foot screen in your living room and have a movie theater in your living room uh, movies have gotten very expensive if you go and you buy popcorn soda and candy and tickets you're spending close to 75 to 85 dollars a family of five cannot afford to go to the movies because it's just outrageously expensive. So they wait for it to come on television. When it comes on television, it's edited, it's chopped up, and it's got commercials, so it sucks. So here you are, folks. You have a chance to rent or buy the film, put it on your own, whatever instrument you have, project it, and enjoy it with your family. And I said, this is the way of tomorrow. And that's why the films that I do, I'm happy that they go to Netflix, and where else do they go? Amazon, Hulu. They go oh, all over oh, the place. All, all those places so that everybody can see the films that we do, not just the people who can afford it, because there are minority people who are on welfare, and they can't afford to go to the movies. And that's a shame, because they're losing out on the fun that we, who can buy a ticket, do. Right. So, so streaming is, yes, in answer to your question, B, I think streaming is the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to the industry. Okay. Um, and, and it's inexpensive because you could buy a film for 10 bucks and five people can watch it and you can watch it whenever you want. You know, it, it, it's just convenience at its utmost. So I intend to make a lot more movies because I'm fabulous. And I, and I, want, you know, I, you know I, I only work with my friends and I tell my friends, your script stinks, your movie's horrible, you're disgusting, but I'll make it fabulous. Just, just say Ron Russell's in it and you'll get a hundred percent attendance. Which is great because I'm, great a, I'm a superstar. Barbara Streisand's nothing like me, and you know, I mean, I've been compared to the looks of Rock Hudson, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, I just I'm so modest. Sometimes I just blush. That's hilarious, <laughs> Jimmy. Screw you. No, I like love it. So talk for a minute. I got to send an email. Who are you sending? That's rude. What are you saying? Well, I'm sending because our guest isn't here. So like, I'm where is our <laughs> guest? That motherfucker. Where is he? Where did I get that Ginzo? Oh yeah, when that guinea comes on this show, I'll show him who's tough, who's a gangster. Yeah, he plays gangsters. Yeah, wait till he has to deal with me. Yeah, we'll get him. We'll get him. But good, we'll get him. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's go back to Angela Joseph. Angela Joseph, who's now told me she's black and Italian. What's the difference? You know, I mean, <laughs> we all look alike. Uh, that was a shocker. I thought you were Swedish. <laughs> Good to see you, Angie. Swedish. So Angie, what's go Angie lives in Colorado, poor dear soul, um, in the mountains with the goats and about 25 children. That she's a wonderful mother. She raises these kids. They're all the best kids, clean cut, good, well mannered kids. Angie, baby, did a good job. Uh, and they live in, in in Colorado. No, nobody lives in Colorado, really, truthfully. Just the people who got stuck there and can't get out. So I told her she's got to move to L.A. and bring the brew. But the kids don't want to come to L.A. because they've got friends. So those of you out there who know about children and moving, it's difficult. Kids don't want to leave their school, their buddies. But you got to drag them by the ear and say, listen, I'm the parent. This is what's good for me. And you got to go with it. Absolutely. And, you know, kids don't rule us. We rule them. Unfortunately, today, you know, I have to tell you a quick story. I was in Manhattan years ago, standing at a corner waiting for the light to change. And there was a little girl. She couldn't have been more than three years old. And the mother was bent over talking to her. And she said, well, what restaurant do you want to go to, honey? I wanted to kick this woman right in the ass and say, sweetie, drag the fucking kid anywhere. It's your kid. The kid's three years old. It knows what restaurant to go to. What are you, mad? So, I mean, really, my mother, my mother never asked me anything. She'd say, get dressed, look good, be nice, don't talk too much and never ask for anything. We're going to so-and-so's house. I mean, I'd sit there on a chair while my mother would be bullshitting with all her friends. And I, and they'd come over and say, Ronnie, would you like a cookie? And I was afraid. And I'd look at my mother and my mother would blink her eyes with a yes. And I'd say, yes, thank you. Those kids don't exist anymore. Uh, Weren't you uh, like that little? They just told me what we did. I, oh, I, I could never join in an adult conversation. My mother would say, you can't do that. You're a child. Children do not join into adult. My kids, when my friends came over, my kids were little. They sat there were bullshitting with them like they were girlfriends. But no, not in my day. Little children were not allowed to speak to adults. And you speak only when you're spoken to. Wait until they say something for you to speak. So I would sit there for hours squirming, saying to myself, I can't wait to get out of here, get my own place. I had times when I was allowed to speak, and then times not. No. Uh, like if they were talking, you know, so they would like, they would always, when everybody they went there, they would like, they would put, um, they would like have a time when all the people that were there would like talk to me, and then it would be time to go like up to my room or whatever. And then I would be no, my father said to me, whatever you hear us speak in the house, do not speak to anyone else. I never repeat it. Actually, Angela wrote, seen and not heard, do not speak unless spoken to. You mean why your mic's not on, your wires is this? It. Uh, no, my father, my father used to say the names of the people that come to our house must never be repeated. So oh, yeah. I said, okay, Al Capone's name I'll never say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't have to worry only, about any of Only those kidding, things. only kidding. Al Capone never came to our house. He was Jimmy's ex-lover. <laughs> yeah. He was at the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how kids were back then. You know, we were very, very uh, whatever. Adults had the had the floor. That was it, and you didn't you didn't get questioned twice. If my mother said to me, uh, "Go go go to bed now," I didn't say no. I don't want to. I get a shot in the head. So she said, "Ronnie, it's time go to bed." I'd say good night. Give my mother a kiss and go to bed. Put the radio on and listen to Inner Sanctum or I Love Lucy or whatever it was on the radio. I love Lucy. Oh, because you had radio. When did, yeah, when did TV come? Lu Lu Lucille Ball was on. It was my favorite wife. It wasn't called uh, I Love Lucy, but it was the same plot. And it was with, it was with Dennis, what's his name? The actor, Dennis, um, Dennis something. And Lucy was Lucy and he was whatever. And it was called My Favorite Wife. It was a funny TV, a radio show. Television was just starting off. This is back in 1948 and 49. Uh, only the very rich had television, and it was like a nine-inch screen round. They used to put a big magnifying glass in front of it to make it bigger, and all the people were distorted. So who wanted a TV? Nobody, except the crazies that thought it was a wonderful invention. We got our first television in 1950, and it was a black and white, and it was a 14... Is that when TV came out in 1950? No, it came out in 1936, I believe. But it wasn't popular till 1950. And then you had to put the antenna on the roof and 
look at this little 14 inch screen in black and white and it used to roll i remember how the screen would be rolling and you'd be going crazy to try to unroll it and now my god the televisions are so wonderful they're all big beautiful screens and perfect perfect and that's just the start they're probably going to get better i mean they're going to have 3 3d real depth television and that's when Eileen Shapiro starts to make money as an actress, when she can go on three days. He's waiting for us to log on, so he's not on the right. He's not on the right link. So keep talking. Okay, Leah, could you picture Eileen Shapiro in three D? Oh my God, it would be like two buses coming into your room at the same time. Eileen, are you still there? Or did she leave? She's not there. Oh, she leaves, huh? Frick her. Where did I get her? I'm going to tell you, folks. Her boobs are fake. They're all falsies. She puts in fake rubber balloons so there you go Eileen <laughs> anyway I have nothing more to talk about except how fabulous I am but that we all know so that's not new news um, I could talk about Jimmy Jimmy has worked very hard in our garden he's lifted 80 pound cement bags and cinder blocks and he helped me to make our garden beautiful I designed it and I cemented it and you know we work as a team we're really very good we kill each other of course you know, we scream and yell because we he's not doing what I want. And he yells at me and says, I don't know what you want. It's total, you know, that married stuff that married people do. But our garden looks lovely. It sure does. And we're trying to get our guest, everybody. Sorry. He's like, I don't know. I don't know exactly. He clicked the link and said there's nobody there. And I don't know why. Well, maybe it's because he's in-house arrest. It worked for our last time. Well, he's in, last he's in in-house re, uh, arrest, and he can't walk with the thing around his ankle. <laughs> the actor that's coming on next is famous for the Sopranos and a lot of uh, movies where he plays a gangster. You'll know him when you see him and hear him. He's a mafioso type, and I have that in common with him because forever – you know, I'm in the business 58 years, and most of the films I've ever done or TV where I played a gangster. I, I don't know why they pick a, a, a gay drag queen to play a gangster. But <laughs> that's a stretch. A, a huge stretch for me to play a tough gangster. But that's what I do. As a matter of fact, I think I'm, I'm a gangster in two more movies, Jim, I think. Um, several. I, I'm not sure several exactly, more. but hang on. I'm trying to copy the link and resend it to them. I'm a murderer and a gangster and a killer. They're fun roles to play because it's the opposite of who I am. I would never kill anybody. Never. And a gangster, I'm f the furthest thing from. But that's what makes it called acting, as Hitchcock used to say. Um, I want to just mention my friend Irene Sodberg has passed oh, that's away. That's sad. Irene was the Mae West to all the gay people. She was a singer and a comedian and fabulous gal, a wonderful person who did so much for gay rights, gay people. She's a straight woman, and she has just passed away Sunday. So I want to say to everybody out there, we've lost a fabulous human being on our planet. Rest in peace, Eileen, Irene, and sing with the angels. It's so sad. She's such sad. a wonderful lady. She's so. a terrific person. All heart. All love and heart. Never foul. Never mean. Never selfish. She was giving and, and, and just adored by millions of people uh, in our industry. Yes, she was. It was very sad. Um, it really was. What happened to our gangster? I'm working on it. I, I, I keep having to pick up the mic so I can't type as fast as I need to. She's uh, like Mary Typist. I love it. Give her a typewriter. I'm trying to send the link to them again, but I can't I can't do it with two hands. I you, need you both hands. You type like a girl. That's okay. Just talk, talk to people. You type, he tell types like a girl, you know, with both tell hands. Tell everybody your story. In my day, if I saw a man type like that, he was a fairy. He would oh. I can type like 100 words a minute. Yeah, like a girl. <laughs> Just like a girl. You do everything like a girl. You are a girl. Anyway, um, is a girl with a beard, like an Italian woman, needs to pluck pluck out the whiskers? Anyway. Anyway, what? Get this guy on the air. I'm not going to make it the Ron Russell show unless I see Make it down. the Russell show. Oh, go ahead. I'm looking to see if this link works for me. Yeah, it works. This stinks. Why do our guests do that? They don't do it on purpose. No, I know, but they get all screwed up. I know of a lot of talk show hosts that we know, we all know each other, and they say the biggest fear is the stupid guests not knowing how to, how to Skype in. 
we're not on Skype anymore. We're even more difficult. More difficult. <laughs> but better, but a better, but better video. Yeah, look how nice the pictures. We haven't lost anything. Everything is really nice for change. Oh boy, let's like let's sing. Start talking about something, and then I'll, I'm almost done. And I'll let's talk. recite uh, something. What could we recite? She was coming round the mountain doing ninety when the pedal from her bicycle broke. She landed in the grass with the pedal up her ass and her left. It punctured by a spoke. Now that was nice. You could sing that to your children. It's a nursery rhyme. Um, what else could we? Anybody out there know any dirty songs that you could send us? That we they could said sing? Ron is so funny. Give Ron a raise, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm going to give you a raise. Yeah, the only raise I'll get. You know what that is, and I could live without that raise. I think that's I, he doesn't even pay me. I've never made a penny on this show. I'm on this show almost ten years. I haven't made a nickel, not a penny, not a sou, not a yen, not a gilda, nothing. Zilch. Ugh, nada. What? Uh, okay, we're ready. Let's go. Let's bring him Let's on. Let's go. Bring on this tough hood. Let's see how tough he is. <laughs> Let's just see this wise guy. He thinks he's a big shot, right? I'll demolish him. I haven't, made, I haven't, made, an, I haven't made a nickel on my acting career either. That's, that, <laughs> that, that, that's because you can't act, you fucking moron. <laughs> I'm I'm really sorry. I'm late. I'm very very sorry. Yeah, you I, know I, what? Three I guys, really apologize. Yeah, when you leave, the, when three guys later are gonna get you and beat the shit out of you. I, I dropped a dime, and now they're coming to get you. <laughs> you know, I totally moved on time, but I was outside. Protesters got in my way. I got stuck. In, <laughs> I couldn't get through the protesters. I couldn't get back in my building. So hey, now we want to make an introduction, to everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Al Sapienza, hello and welcome to the show. Did I pronounce it right? You did. How you doing? I am very good, you guys. So this is my cool, outrageous man co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Hello, Ron. Let's see if I can how make this come, bigger. How, how come us Italians are so gorgeous? I don't, thank you. <laughs> Look at that face on you, you handsome son of a bitch. I take that as a compliment. Thank it you very much. Compliment. We, we're, you know, I bigger. play gangsters all, in all the movies I'm in. I play a tough guy, too. Because I'm <laughs> one, so it's easy. I just told you know you, where are you from? I'm from uh, originally. I was born in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, but right now I'm uh, I'm in Manhattan. <laughs> See? Oh wow! Yeah, but wait a minute. Uh... I I was born in Red Hook. Oh, Red Hook. That's good. Red Hook, Brooklyn. Tough neighborhood, baby. We used to play them in knife throwing. <laughs> 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 Yeah, tough neighborhoods, Brooklyn. <laughs> I love it. So, so also we have a chat room full of people from all over the world. Say hi to everybody in the chat room. All over the world. Hello, everyone. How and are you? Well, welcome to our show and to New York City. So I, I'm having trouble seeing because unfortunately I'm on a, 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 a phone. My laptop is up in Connecticut, so I can't really see your faces. I see that big, cool, is flock of beautiful gray hair. What movies have you been in? Oh, uh, Gone with the Wind. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't good at birth of no babies. <laughs> no, I was with Tree Loren and Tab Hunter and that kind of woman. I've done wow. a lot of television. And right now I'm doing wow. three movies out and six more to make. And they always type me as a gangster. The guy with the... Like or a the, cop. Well, last movie me I was... Too. Big friggin' rat, and I played Paulie from Brooklyn, who took this guy up to a cabin in the woods to chop him up because he was a squealer. <laughs> now, you know, I, I really don't speak. And here's how I did it: Yeah, get over here. You know what I'm talking about? That guy over there. He just, he just told on us. Don't you get what I mean? He's he's gonna rat on us. Kill him! Kill him now! You That's know, really I'm, great because without that, you don't have any kind of New York accent. Of course, yeah, right. of course I do. <laughs> I'm joking. I know. You know what? Listen to me. When I start to sound like a California faggot, I quickly fly back to New York to get my Brooklyn accent back. I refuse to say, oh, I shot her beaver. <laughs> now, we are actually married, too. You know? <laughs> We're married. I mean, so. That's what the straight guys say here when they see some chick's pussy. They say, oh, I shot her beaver. I said, what the fuck you shot her beaver? <laughs> you spotted her pussy, you moron. <laughs> but anyway, you know. So hold on. We got to do some. I want to do some bragging for you. First of all, you guys, once we do some bragging and talk about some of the stuff that everybody knows and, about. And, and I love you already. 
Once we <laughs> once we do all that, then we're going to talk about his brand new movie that just came out yesterday called Tell Me I Love You. Um, well, we're going to talk about that. But first, I want to brag a little bit for him and, and also uh, just talk about some of the other things that you guys know him from because he, he's he's like a superstar. First of all, you got the greatest IMDb ever. I mean, you have so many credits on your IMDb. You're like on every television show that everybody <laughs> watches. You're in like all these like great movies. Um, I think the first time I ever saw you was probably uh, that I knew it was you was in The Sopranos. But yeah. I love all those cheesy horror movies that you did, like Megalodon and and like Megalodon. all the really like shitty ones that were terrific. Like um, the ones, yeah. like the ones he's does. The one and the ones <laughs> I'm doing now. I got nine beauties lined up. Nine beauties. Oh my so god! Is anyone is anyone you know shooting now, or any of your friends shooting? Yeah, all the indie people are shooting. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting oh now. I think I'm, well, I think I'm on call for July and August for two films, and then That's we hope great. in Atlantic City. Uh, no, Atlantic City, Atlanta, Georgia, to shoot five weeks, and then we're in New York shooting another, and then we're in Tennessee shooting. So hold on, let me That's go back. Fabulous. Here's some here's some bragging. Okay, so you guys know him from the from the Sopranos. He was Mikey on the Sopranos on television, and I only picked out a few things because there's so many. You've seen him on Suits, Jack Ryan, Taken, I Zombie, yeah. Supernatural, Shades of Blue, Bates Motel, Gotham, The Flash, Blue Bloods, Prison Break, Twenty Four movies. He always plays a freaking gangster, you guys. So in a lot of things, he yeah. was in Gangsterland, and the reason I bring that up is because Sean Kanan is in it, and he's a really good friend of ours. Um, so gangster land, he just did a movie recently. I don't even know if it's out yet called Capone with Tom Hardy, Linda Cardellini, Matt Dillon, Kyle McLaughlin, where he plays Ralphie. Like, so there's another gangster thing. Uh, he was in both Godzilla movies, 1998 <laughs> and 2014. He was in gangster land. Like I said, triple X return of Xander cage, the last, the last American Guido, which I don't even know what that is. I just put it on the list because it sounded good. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Saw That's Five, funny. Free Willy 2, Cellular, which Larry Cohen, who wrote that, was a friend of ours. Um, uh, Dolan's Cadillac. Uh, and here's some of the people that he's worked with. And after I get all this bragging out, then everybody will like realize what a big deal you are. And then they'll be like, oh, my God, oh, my <laughs> God. Um, so he's worked with Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Cranston. And this is just a few people, you guys. He's got so many credits. Elizabeth Olsen, Juliet Binoche, Matt Dillon, Tom Hardy, Donald Sutherland, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren, Sean Ferris, who I love, Jason Patrick. Peter Fascinelli, Michael Pere, Vin Diesel, John Hamm, Ruby Rose, Nina Dobrev, Chris Evans, Kim Basinger, Christian Slater, Wes Bentley, and a slew of others that are probably so, so tell me now. So tell me, now that you have this career, you're making so much money, you don't have to work the trucks anymore, right? Um, no, I still work the trucks on Sundays, right after church. You're selling televisions <laughs> out the back door, right? <laughs> Remember Brooklyn? I love that shit. I used to go to my friends' houses in Brooklyn, and the father would say, you want refrigerators? You want televisions? Oh. We got crystal chandeliers oh coming. Oh, my God. You know what? It was a very know? Italian thing. I agree. I, I When I was little, it's how to tell Italians, our, our history in new in the new york area it is amazing it's tr truly amazing and we thought that was all it was just part of our lives part of our culture it was normal. everybody everything came off the back of a truck it was hysterical and everyone was so excited you know well, it's easter it's came. just crazy easter came crazy he said to me where are you getting your easter suit i'm going to louis <laughs> house I've got a whole load of suits coming in <laughs> yeah did you it's see crazy. jersey boys did you see the movie jersey boys loved it I like, did. Like when we saw Jersey Boys, he's sitting there going, "Oh my god, that was like my life growing up." Because Ron's Ron's a little yeah. bit older than you. I'm eighty years old. I'm eighty, and oh, I, good. God I bless. Grew up with all the big names. You know, I went, I hung out in. Uh, well, anyway, I hung, <laughs> I hung out in I hung out in places with names that people, if I mentioned, would faint. They they'd, they'd mm -hmm. be terrified. You know them as well, because if you're from Brooklyn, Bay Ridge. Name a couple of them. Give me two of them. No, 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 no. I never will. He's afraid to get. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not afraid. I was raised. You never, you ever give out names. My father said to me, the names you hear in this house, you forget. And I do. I forget everybody's name. Uh, you don't talk about people that you don't. No, you mind your fucking business. But anyway. Um, so what is it about like being a gangster? Like, like, do you have to audition to be a gangster now? No. Or do they just cast you automatically because of, of all his, your experience? It's in his blood. It's in his blood. Look at his face. He looks like a gangster. <laughs> I have a really funny story. I have a really funny story. In like 1982-ish, I went out to Los Angeles. And I was in L.A. as my primary re residence from 82 to 98 when I got the Sopranos. 
when I got the Sopranos and came back to New York, I was like, I'm going to stay here. I, I, I always miss New York. I never felt at home in LA, but I still have a place there. I work as there, there as the local and I, you know, I go there whenever I have to. But from 1982 to 1990, my name was Alex Statler. I changed, I'm 100% Italian. I changed my name to Alex Statler. And I had a, the reason I work so much is I have a good agent. But then I had an agent, his name was Steve Dontonville. He wound up being the head of talent at ICM. And, um, and I was with uh, the Gage Group and then moved on to Paul Koner when he moved to Paul Koner. When he went to ICM, it was like 1983 or four. I was very young. He didn't take me. But he said to me, he was like, listen, man, you have green eyes. You know how to talk without a, uh, an accent when you want to. He said, change your name. You'll, you'll be typecast as an Italian. So I did. And if you look at my resume in those years, I was in Pretty Woman. I, my first movie was I had two lines in Pretty Woman. Here and... Jo uh, cast as doctors, lawyers, and teachers from 82 to 90 <laughs> only. So The Godfather 3 was cast. This is a great story. It's a total true story. I was, I worked, worked, thank God, worked, but I was working as doctors, lawyers, and teachers, Alex Sattler. So 1990 comes around 89, and they're casting The Godfather 3. I'm 100% Italian. I will name names. My father worked with Albert Anastasia and his brother Anthony, who invented the the um, Longshoreman's Union. My my father was big. You who know, started the Longshoreman's Union? You know, I my whole life, and I um I couldn't. Yeah, yeah. So I couldn't. Uh, I, I I couldn't get an audition, and I finally did. I didn't get it. DRC role is fantastic, but. I, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get an audition. It took me like forever. So I changed my name back in 1990. I had a nice role that year called, which Danny acted and wrote. He, he, he was the director of all the CSI pilots and put me in everything. Well, since then, when, as soon as I changed my name back to Al Sapienza, all I get is auditions for gangsters and cops and, and that kind of guy. As I get older and my hair turned gray, I'm starting to be able to play stage and politicians and stuff, but it's just amazing. It's it amazing how people's brains work. When Alex I Statler, I couldn't get a role as an Italian. When I changed to Al Sapienza, I couldn't get a role for a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. When I was 19 years old, my name, my it's a real true name, story. My real name is Rolando, and my last name is Serego. So when I had my Rolando oh. Serego, they said to me, Are you Puerto Rican? I said, no, I'm 100% Italian from Brooklyn. They said, oh, well, too ethnic, we can't use you. Then I became Ron Russell, and I began impersonating Jane Russell and drag doing comedy. <laughs> now, from Jane Russell and drag, they put me as a gangster. <laughs> so that's a bigger stretch than yours. Anyway, now with Ron Russell, I'm a talk show radio host for years. Now I'm back in film as Ron Russell, and they still make me a gangster. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, right? You gotta like love. Well, you crazy. How do we, if you could I see make, like, I want to make this bigger so I can see your face. Yeah, let me do come. You guys know how to make this bigger. I look like turn a, your phone sideways and we'll see you bigger. I think before you had it sideways because at one point we saw all of you and now we see just your head. Let's see. Better. Um, yeah, you're a little bigger now. See, uh, see, that's How's great that? for that you. You terrific yeah. there. See, that better. So I with black yeah, hair, I, I look can like see you guys. Color. When I had black hair, That's I looked funny. like a real hood. Now with the white hair, I look a little <laughs> softer. Can but you see him? So good. I you look know. good. You look good. So yeah, for eighty years old, not bad in Gamba, Uncle Ada, right? You speak yeah. Italian? You look great. Do you speak Italian? Nah, not really. Terrible. You suck you son of a bitch. You <laughs> I wish. You speak Italian. How come you? Where, where, where you I have enough trouble Italian? with English. Are you Napolitan or Sicilian or what? My father was from Bel, yeah, um, half and half, exactly. My father was from Bel Paso, Sicily. I went there with him, and Mother Joe. It was unbelievable. My mother, my mother was born in Brooklyn, but her mother was born in um, her mother was born in Amalfi, and her mother's my mother's father was born in Bati, that port town in the Adriatic. 
And um, right. I went to Italy and when I used to go as a kid, I could converse like I, I, I it was amazing, but I kind of forgot everything, like everything, because I just I haven't been there in about in about eight. The last time I was there was eight years ago. Yeah, you know, um, when I go there, it takes about three weeks yeah. for my to be fluent again. I don't know. I grew up. So it's, it's hey, wonderful don't... being Italian, don't you think? He froze. Yeah, I speak pig Latin. <laughs> he speaks I pig can't. Latin. I speak it too. I eat pig Latin, pay. No, I yeah. speak a different one. <laughs> to go, you go, we're gone, to go, to go, to go, make it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different Which picture. Is wrong. Oh, I don't even know what that is. I said, do you want to speak to me? <laughs> there you go. So, so I want to make sure we bring up, because we've uh, we got like 10 minutes, and I want to make sure we talk about your new film, since that's what we brought you on for originally. At least the publicist brought you on originally for. Um, so you got a brand new romantic comedy that you're in. It's called Tell Me I Love You. It was released yesterday. Tell Me I Love You. Um, I wrote some notes down. First of all, it stars, and I don't know how to pronounce this person's name, Kenny, Kenny Tio Horn. She's the star of it. I don't know how you pronounce her name, but her IMDb number is really good. So she's yeah. she, uh, and the preview for this is great. Jamie Lunar, Al is in it. Ashley Parker, Angel, Sam Clark, Paulina Cirilla, and there's a cameo which I didn't even see her credited on IMDb. But the lady at the jewelry store with the wedding rings is Carolyn Hennessy because she's a friend of ours. <laughs> oh yeah, she's a good friend. <clears throat> and uh, so it's about three Malibu yeah. best roommates and bandmates discovering. Do you know? Dreams in love with a crazy plot to make some cash on the way. So tell us a little bit about the film. You know Jamie Lunar from Melrose Place. Yes, she's in all. The, she's a really good actress. She um she's in a lot of Lifetime movies. She was on Melrose Place. She's she's terrific. It was it's really um I only saw parts of it. I haven't been able to see it yet. I've been really busy, but I heard it was really really good and really funny and cute and um. And uh, pe the people that I know who saw it liked it a lot. And um, Fiona McKenzie, I think this is her first feature. Um, I did a short with her like 10 years ago. Fiona wrote this, directed it. It's a great girl. She's actually friends with Jamie. And um, this has been like a project in her heart for a long, long, long time. I don't know if it's based on, 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 uh, on an event or anything that really happened in her life, but... Um, it was really good people in the film, and you totally should watch it. Look, you've got this, for the most part, shelter in place in the big cities. This is a perfect time um, to check these movies out. And like these independent films, when people write them and direct them, they, they put a lot of heart into it, a lot. Yes. So uh, no, I, work I, I recommend seeing it. So also, you guys, it's got one of the people in it is Ashley Angel Parker, which anybody who's a boy band fan, he was like the really cute guy from O Town who now is on Broadway doing a bunch of stuff on Broadway. Your mic is going in. A bunch of stuff on Broadway. He's like a really like cool guy. Um, the plot of it basically looks like if you watch the trailer that there's these two girls and a guy, and they're they're in a band and. They need money, and one of the girls inherits money if she gets married, but they're really kind of like a three-way. And uh, uh, so one of them marries the other one to get the money, but then the family, and it's how everybody else interacts and reacts to the whole thing because the tagline of the film is family is actually who you choose. Um, and it looks really great. It's going to have great indie music in it. It's got lots of recognizable faces that everybody will know. It just came out yesterday. Um, so it, you know it's brand new. Nobody's seen it. You gotta like go to all well, the digital can, download where, where sites. Can we get it? All the digital download sites will can have it. Can we get it at Netflix? I don't know if it's on Netflix because you don't pay. Uh, it, it'll be on Amazon, you guys. It'll be on iTunes. All the digital download sites. Uh, it's very very cute film. Uh, it looks really good, and, and I was just surprised because I I actually recognized everybody who was in it. Like I, everybody in it, I've seen in something. So they put and, together a great cast. And I hope you. I hope I, you I, I, I think you have a. Sh Fix your microphone. I think you have a short in your microphone, or I have a short, have a short today too. You're, you're you're going in and out, and mm -hmm. and the the viewers must be uh, must be hard for viewers to hear you because you're literally yeah. going in and out. It's, it's like, like you have a short, a short in your line. There is a short in it. I told him that he's got a short in his brain too. But uh, <laughs> I hope one day you and I work together. I'll be your older brother. <laughs> <laughs> and don't laugh. Jimmy produces a lot of movies. You may just be in. Me too. Let's do it. And, and we could be brothers, but you have to be from Red Hook, not from uh, Bay Ridge. Where were you from? <laughs> from in Bay Ridge. Exactly. Where were you from in Bay Ridge? 72nd Street Court. The other court. And this is a coincidence. There's only like eight houses on that whole courtyard. It's a cul de sac right by Shore Road. 
not far from the water. You know who else? I didn't know him when we were little, but you know who else came from that cul-de-sac? It's only eight houses in the whole United States of America. Who else came from that cul-de-sac? Scott Bale. Lived oh. on the same little Scott circle. Bale. He's in a film I'm producing. Yeah, so right all these now. little houses are like seven. Yeah, he, he's in one of Jimmy's films now. No, I used to hang out with everybody from Mill Basin, the whole Mill Basin. Great, right, great. Right. At the Copa, the Copa Lounge in Brooklyn. You know the Copa Lounge in Brooklyn? Mm -hmm. We used to go there. Uh, and so all I, the weddings um, were held at, you know, whose place. Yes, wow. Well, I love my days. So I, I love those days. Here, I miss them so much. Here's a hypothetical. Wait, the, the Boca oh. Yacht Club. Everybody would go down to the boats. We'd go from boat to boat, cooking pastas and all kinds of food. Yeah. It, was, it was wonderful. It was that when the America was wonderful. Now with this bullshit. Oh, God. Those were the days. I mean, those were the days. We were peaceful, happy people. It was beautiful. I miss them. Yeah. My Brooklyn friends very much, and I miss New York tremendously. So as you're walking walking through the apartment, let's do a hypothetical because it'll be interesting to see what you say because you have such a huge body of work. But who's on your bucket list of people that you haven't had? I have to ask one question first. Okay. I don't hear him now. Um, I Wait. believe it or not, I, I worked with I, I'm I'm trying to get a better connection. Okay. Can, do you think it's my phone or do you think your microphone? Um, I think you think it's it's my phone, or you think it's your mic? Uh, like they you're literally that, going in and out. They say they think it's you because uh, they can hear me. Listen, I want to ask you a question. Wait, 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 wait. Gonna... This is important. Are you single? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no because... I like it how he said no, that. No, <laughs> because I have a very beautiful daughter. She was first runner-up in Miss America. Gorgeous blonde with green eyes. I'm trying to marry her off. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. And you're cute. You, you, you don't want to. You don't want to um, inflict me on any. You don't want to inflict me on any women you know. <laughs> you're so you're probably right. the best. Believe me, but I'd, lo I'd love to go with coffee with her just to just to, oh uh, to be. I, I actually have a six year old daughter. Oh, good for you. If you could believe it, she's a little dull. Okay, so, so I worked with Pacino. That okay. was amazing. I worked on um, Michelle Pfeiffer. I never worked, and I really want to work with him, um, not for ego reasons, for artistic reasons. I never worked with Scorsese. Ah, I didn't do uh, any of his movies. I came, I came close once in, the, um, in the, uh, the one he did with the gangster about Whitey Bulger in Boston with Matt Damon. I can't remember the name of it, but... I came very, very close to getting in that film. I had like two, three callbacks with them. But they, uh, and believe it or not, I was much younger than to play a young Jack Nicholson. But they wound up, Jack Nicholson wound up playing himself as a young Jack Nicholson. But um, that was the closest I came. And uh, The de Departure, what was that movie called? Yeah, The, Depart the Departed. Um, the one in Boston. The Departed. The Departure. The Departed, right. Right. Yeah, that, that was a great, great movie until the yeah, last 20 minutes. Um, the, it was a great movie, but the ending was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it just it was this realistic movie like Goodfellas and The Godfather, and then the end is... Um, but I totally want to work with Scorsese. I would love to... Uh, I'd love to work with De Niro. I met Joe Pesci a number of times, but I never acted with him. I'd love to do that. And I was offered a role in Jersey Boys. Um, oh, early God. on great. in 2005, I was offered a role to play Chip to Carlo in the musical. Um, I mean, why didn't you take and it? I really, I, you know, I had, because I was offered at the same time, another role. I, I, I was in the, I really wanted to go back to musical theater that year. Um, I started out musical theater. I started out as a musician and I wanted to, uh, I got a ro offer to play the, the, um, Oh my God! The Jerry Orbach role in the fifteen million dollar musical version of Dirty Dancing. Now that oh, was a, cool. a, a, a premiere. You know, it was a premiere, and Jersey Boys had already premiered. I would have been the first company opening that hotel in Las Vegas. It, it, I think it's still running there. It was one of the longest running shows ever. So I would have opened that hotel, but um, and like you know, it already was on Broadway. I don't know if I ever would have got to do it on Broadway. I, you know, there were no reviews. So I figured I'd do the new show 
And I stayed in dirt. I loved Dirty Dancing. I really had a great time. I was in that show for 18 months. Wow. Um, and I loved it. So I, I, it was, you know, you make these choices and you, and you don't know. I don't know what would have happened if I went to Vegas and how different my life would have been. You, you know, you never know when you, when you make right. these decisions. But I loved, I loved being right. in Dirty Dancing. As, yeah, as long as, you, as long as your life is good, you made the right decision. That's what I just said. The, the parrot. Repeat. Yeah, yeah. So hold on. We've only got a minute. No, it's good because I can't hear you very well. Okay, so you guys listen up. This is Al Tell Saturday. me I love you. Make sure you see this movie. Tell me I love you. On Prime, on iTunes, the movie is Tell Me I Love You, directed and written by Fiona McKenzie. You really want to catch it out. With all the crap that's going on in the street and in the news and with COVID, it's also, it'll make you feel good. You know, there you go, everybody. Laugh. And what good I music, do. too. And you guys follow Al on Twitter and uh, Instagram. He's Al Sapienza, S-A-P-I-E-N-Z-A. Go see Tell Me I Love You. We want to thank you for coming on the show. Um, we got like 30 seconds left. Um, and can I plug one other thing? I have another movie coming out. Uh, uh, another movie coming out today called The Fifth Barrow. The Fifth Barrow with Tara Reid, Lilo Brancato. So see these movies. Tell me I love you. The Fifth Barrow on all these, go. all these forms. You can rent it's it everywhere. Fifth, it's okay? The Fifth Barrow about Brooklyn. It's about Staten Island. Oh yeah, we want to see it. Or Staten Island. It's uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah, you'll 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 like this. Lilo Brancato, Jimmy. Jimmy Russo from uh, the four, from from Jersey Boys. I can. Uh, uh, oh my God, the guy who played Furio, uh, Federico Castelluccio. He's a great guy. Good cast. So tell me, yeah. I love you. The comedy with music, and the Fifth Borough, a good mob family story. All right, Based Al. Thank you so story. much. Good luck with everybody. Everybody, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week. Enjoyed it. Bye bye. Great Ciao, meet you guys. Tell me, I Ciao. love you, everybody. Right, great tell me, I love you. Bye bye. Hope to bye work. Bye. Hope to work with you. See you soon. Bye bye. Tell me I love you. Tell me I love yes. you. <laughs> Good. Bye I bye. I love you. <laughs>